the reason I killed him was because he was a child molester. Well, if it's all right, I'd like to tell you where it started. Go ahead. All right, well, we were, he was my bunkie, and I had found out that he was in prison for uh, child molestation. That night, he was trying to justify why he did it, and I just told him to be quiet, and he would have to leave in the morning to find a new cell. But he continued to talk about it and try to justify it, so I wrapped a cord around his neck, and I took his life. In the realm of criminal offenses, few evoke as strong a response as child molestation. The safety and well-being of children are societal pillars, prompting an uncompromising stance against those convicted of such heinous acts. While the legal system endeavors to administer justice, there exist instances where incarcerated pedophiles face a dark and twisted form of retribution from their fellow inmates. Let's look into three gripping and chilling cases that illuminate the grave dangers that pedophiles confront behind bars. Within the unforgiving confines of the Saginaw Correctional Facility, a fateful cell-sharing arrangement between Stephen Sanderson and Theodore Dyer would set in motion a chain of events that would culminate in Dyer's ultimate demise. Sanderson, astute and vigilant, gradually unearthed the darkest secret harbored by his cellmate, an unshakable conviction for child molestation. Initially, Sanderson granted Dyer the opportunity to extricate himself from their shared space, perhaps in an act of compassion or a glimmer of hope for redemption. However, when confronted with Dyer's unrepentant justifications for his heinous actions, Sanderson's restraint crumbled beneath the weight of righteous fury. In a moment of scorching agitation, he wrenched a quarter tightly around Dyer's neck, ruthlessly extinguishing the life that had become an unbearable blight within the prison's walls. This stark and chilling illustration epitomizes the zero-tolerance attitude adopted by some inmates, for whom a prison sentence is little more than a grim precursor to a death sentence. Richard Huckle's name reverberated across the annals of infamy as Britain's most abhorrent pedophile, a predator who concealed his depravity behind the guise of a freelance photographer in Malaysia. The extent of Huckle's monstrous actions was unveiled when authorities dismantled his macabre digital empire known as the Love Zone, liberating 85 abused children and ensnaring numerous pedophiles in the process. Yet, the unmasking of Huckle's repugnant crimes was not limited to his interactions with unsuspecting victims. With an audacity born of a disturbed mind, Huckle brazenly boasted about his abominable acts to his fellow incarcerated offenders, basking in a perverse sense of accomplishment. However, the tides of justice conspired to deliver a chilling retribution within the prison's impenetrable walls. In the year 2019, Huckle was discovered lifeless in his cell, his body bearing the grotesque testament of a fellow inmate's wrath, a relentless stabbing fueled by an insatiable desire for vengeance against Huckle's unconscionable transgressions against innocent children. Roy William Whiting etched his name in the annals of infamy through the kidnapping and murder of eight-year-old Sarah Payne. Incarcerated for his despicable actions, Whiting found himself thrust into a living nightmare behind the cold steel bars of the prison system. Within those oppressive walls, his existence became a harrowing testament to the violence unleashed upon those regarded as the vilest of criminals. Whiting's days were marred by the unrelenting onslaught of fellow inmates, their wrath manifesting in savage attacks that left indelible marks upon his body and soul. The year 2002 witnessed a chilling assault as a fellow prisoner wielded a razor with chilling intent, carving a six-inch scar across Whiting's cheek, a visceral reminder of the horrors inflicted upon innocent lives. The subsequent years only intensified the brutality, with a fellow inmate blinding him in one eye through a merciless stabbing in 2011, followed by an unrelenting assault in 2018 that left Whiting requiring immediate medical attention. These relentless acts of retribution serve as a stark and haunting reminder of the perilous existence endured by individuals such as Whiting within the unforgiving confines of the prison system. Thank you for joining us on this gripping journey into the chilling world of vigilante justice against pedophiles in prison. We hope that this exploration has shed light on the brutal consequences that await those who have committed such heinous acts. Please make sure to like the video and subscribe the channel and comment down your thoughts below.